Ah, the watch party. Nothing beats huddling with family and friends while watching your favorite movie or TV show. The buildup, the suspense, the sheer joy of sharing those big moments together. But before you watch something, it's got to get made. And before that, someone has to sit down and write the damn thing. That's all well and good, but unless you've been living under a rock the past couple of months, you know the Hollywood screenwriters are on strike. Nothing is happening. No one is writing. As such, productions have shut down. Even mega favorites such as Cobra Kai and Stranger Things are halted indefinitely. The scripts are not ready. The writing has stopped. I'm not going to bore you with the specifics of the squabble, but you can be sure it's about what most strikes are about. Money. Basically, writers are getting paid less in an era of streaming. That especially applies to residuals, which is money that is earned after the initial payment or salary. It's kind of a complex formula for determining how much money is paid, such that I imagine most writers don't even understand it themselves. They're just told how much they're getting and it's not a lot. But I couldn't help but feel from the very beginning something more was going on. This all seems too basic, isn't it? Something about all this feels as made up as, well, a Hollywood movie. This seemed to be further confirmed when, earlier on, Judd Apatow said the same thing. They already know what they're going to bend on, he said. Yeah, that has to be true. So then, why hold out? Well, one reason is that apparently they have the opportunity to cancel a lot of overall deals. Basically, writers, producers, and actors sign an overall deal with a studio or network for a certain number of shows at a guaranteed minimum. This has been around forever, but really got carried away with the streaming wars. If the strike goes for over 60 days, which it already has, they will be able to cancel these deals for breach of contract, and then be able to save a hefty chunk of change. So that's definitely part of it, but is it all? I don't really think so. But let's put all the money stuff aside right now, we'll get to it later. Let's take a step back and observe the writer's behavior with their words, because you know it's certainly always true that actions speak louder than words. They say they face an existential crisis. Most working writers can barely afford to live anymore. So your support for their union is essential to assuring the long-term survival of all of this. And certainly many people have supported the union. But many people is not everyone. Observe the critical drinker. But on the subject of terrible writing, we might soon be freed from it, at least with the writers of Hollywood at the moment. I, I feel like we're not losing an awful lot. Like I would love to see just a big old reset of, of the creative pool that we have available because when I look at the, the movies that have been put out over the past few years, I think we'd all agree that like generally this the standard has been absolute dog shit and I don't really support their their demands for more money because they're not fucking worth it. What they've produced hasn't been worth it. Yeah, in case you've been living under a rock for the past five plus years, there's been a lot of division in entertainment and it's rarely been pretty. Or to be more specific, it's not division in the entertainment industry so much that it's division between creators and fans. It's gotten pretty intense. Fans accuse the creators of massacring beloved characters and franchises. Meanwhile, creators lash back, calling fans racist, sexist, homophobic, or whatever else as a way to neutralize the criticism. Yeah, that goes on, and the bad blood has definitely left a lot of people with opinions just like the drinkers. These people, the ones on the other side of the spectrum, they don't care about the strike. They don't think you deserve extra money. Go pound sand. In fact, it's good stuff is shutting down. That means fewer disasters like this. But then seeing as how the writers claim they are facing an existential crisis and things have gotten so bad, you would think, hey, maybe now is a good time to mend some of the wounds from recent years. Why don't we try to win back some of the fans who feel burned? In the end, we're all on the same side. It's called the high ground maneuver. Basically, it means when you're having a disagreement with another person or group over a specific detail, you instead shift the focus of the discussion to something bigger and broader, essentially moving to the higher ground. It's the broader topic or point that everyone agrees with. 
I have the high ground! Yeah, pretty much that. And no one represents all the conflict between fans and creators more than Ryan Johnson. And look what he put out. For much of my career, I've had the extreme privilege to work as a filmmaker and bring my visions to life for all. It began with some early success. I got through the door. Every day I spend doing this is a gift that I can never repay. Now I know that many of you have not agreed with my creative choices. You told me so. Then I told you what I thought, not always in the best way. We disagreed. It got heated. But let me tell you this one thing that is true. The purpose of the writer's strike is not for me. It's to keep that door open for the next auteur looking to get started. Because even if you and I disagree on what makes for a great story, we both agree that great stories are the lifeblood of our culture and society. They shape our lives in ways we could never imagine. For that, I humbly ask that you please support the writers in their strike against the studios. The stakes have never been higher. Wow, notice the high ground maneuver there. Instead of arguing over specific plot and character choices, he raises the whole discussion to a higher level and... <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm fucking with you. He never said that, not in the slightest. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> However, he did call on people to support the union, but not even the slightest hint or attempt at an olive branch to those he has clashed with in the past few years. And I don't mean to actually make this about Johnson specifically, but the point is something I absolutely couldn't help but notice. For all the divisiveness in movies and television for over half a decade, not one person ever tried to get support of the counter-reactionary side. The fans who watch Critical Drinker or were part of the fandom menace or just feel like everything coming out of Hollywood is insulting to them, they're simply ignored. For these fans, it began with the writers ignoring what they want to see as potential audience members. It continues with the writers ignoring their potential support in the strike against the studios. At least there's symmetry. You can try and run a search. Why conservatives should support the writer's strike? Ah, look, it returns nothing. Nada. There's not one article anywhere on that topic. All the supposedly talented writers out there, but not a single one, had it in him to write why everyone, even people he disagrees with on political issues, should support the strike. Apparently, there is only this. I mean, except I wrote that. It is a great piece of writing, you gotta admit. I'm pretty good. But really, there's nothing. Doesn't that strike you as odd? All the divisiveness the industry has gone through, why is no one, literally no one, making an effort to bring people together? If you want to approach it logically, you would only reach a few possible conclusions. Number one. There is no existential threat. You remember that phrase comes from the WGA themselves. They repeatedly claim this is an existential threat. Except people who face such a threat would do everything they can to gather as much support from wherever possible. Clearly, that is not the case here. Number two, there is an existential threat. But enlisting the support of conservatives and other reactionaries is a bridge too far to cross. Considering we live in such a divided society, you can imagine this is probably true for at least some of the writers. That said, the guild is quite large and you would think it's not true for all writers. Someone would extend an olive branch. Well, from those two points, you would certainly have to conclude the stakes aren't as existential as they claim. You remember, it's not someone's words, but their actions. Their behaviors that reveal the truth. In fact, on that point, I think we can add a third possibility to the list. Number three, the stakes are important, but not existential. However, random people supporting the strike will have no impact on the final resolution. All the calls and posts to support the writers are just for social media posturing and good feelings, virtue signaling in an echo chamber. People feel validated and imagine they're making a meaningful contribution, even when they're not. 
Their imagination is what counts. Thus, there's no need to ever call on the support of undesirables. It's all just for show anyway, and including them would ruin the good vibes. So, considering the options and considering most of the actual picketing has turned into theme events and pseudo parties, you have to seriously suspect point three is where it's really at. It's just a show and the eventual resolution will be made regardless of who supports it and who doesn't. So then, what's really going on? If we eliminate all the nonsense, what's left? This is where we go back to what Judd Apatow said when it all began. It just doesn't make sense, which is why I don't think this is an economic battle. It's not about the profit margins of the studios against the resolve and goodwill of the striking writers. No, this is a psychological battle, and it's one the writers will likely lose. I realized this when a new writer, Olga Alexo, explained some of the points on the podcast open to it. First, listen to how she describes how the pay in life of a writer has changed over time. It just sucks uh, for low for lower level writers, especially, but even um, uh, upper level writers, mid level writers are totally feeling it. I've spoken to people who are making the same amount now that they made five years ago and everyone's just being paid the total minimum. No one's willing to give you more if you have more experience. Yeah, um, that's all across the board. Everyone's feeling the squeeze. OK, I mean, that could apply to everyone in America, but we'll focus on the writers pay is way down because of streaming and how residuals work with that. It's been getting worse and worse over the decades. Every change in the industry has resulted in less money for the studios. Now listen to this part. I've met a lot of people on the picket lines who picketed in like 88 and 07 and 81. And they have all said the same thing, which is that we always win. We have never lost. The studios eventually cave. It's all a matter of how long it takes for them to cave. So basically, if we take those together, you can see that the pay and career aspects for writers have steadily gotten worse over the past several decades. Also, they always win. That makes you think, if they are truly winning, shouldn't it be pretty close to how it's always been? Maybe now you just need to fight to maintain that some more. It's some, but not so much better, it's become an EXISTENTIAL CRISIS. That's why I think this is a psychological battle more than anything else. The studios let the writers go on strike for months and months. Stuff gets shut down and cancelled. Then finally they make a big show and give the writers 80-90% to 90 of what they wanted, which feels like a big victory. We always win. We have never lost. Except you ended up taking less than where you were before, but were tricked into imagining that as a great victory. Think of any general downward graph. You know how they look. They're never straight down. It's always a downward trend. You can view these points as the strikes. We always win. We have never lost. Yeah, except when you take a few steps back, these look like hollow victories in a losing war. I guess the most you can say is the decline in value of writers is much like the decline in value of so many skilled laborers in America. And that doesn't even get into the AI aspect of it all. Yeah, that. We'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Have a great day. I'll see you at the next watch party.